Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. cane sugar up here in the north and it's like God provided everything we need where you're at you know I mean this is our sugar of the north maple syrup we have a bag and we have a bag holder we open the bag up fold it over this part Put it together, pull it down so that this hole is clear. And these are the taps. And then this hole, this part of the tap goes into the tree. And then it hangs like this on the tree. Okay. So then the sap runs through the little spigot and into the bag. And that's all it is. And these bags you use over again. You wash these and you hang them out to dry and you use them over again. Yes, yeah. I do. Uh -huh. sure. <laughs> Reduce, reuse, recycle. Yeah. We have a soft maple. We generally tap on the south side of the tree because that warms up faster um, with the south sun. We're so far north. We tap somewhere around belt buckle height. We tap an inch and a half deep, which I have electrical tape on here, and we put a slight angle downward on it to help run the, the sap out of the tap. That's exactly how our forefathers did it with cordless drills. We blow it out. Since we use such small taps, this is only a 5 16 bit. We use real tiny taps as to do less damage to the tree. They have a small hole. So we like to blow it out because the least little thing can plug these. We, there's lots of different ways to do it, but we use the tin covers and the bags. That's all there is to it, and it doesn't take long to tap 100 trees if your battery doesn't give out. Otherwise, you could use a, a brace bit. You boys decide who's getting off first with a bucket and going to the big tree. We don't have a big sugar bush. We only have three or four acres of woods on this farm. So when we wanted to start, we talked to this neighbor, and he's like, yeah, I'll loan you 25 taps this year, and I'll come over. I said, well, I'm not even sure what a hard maple is versus a soft maple, and this is when we first moved up here. A hard maple, or a sugar maple, is a hard maple, and they don't bud out as early, and their sap has a higher sugar content. Um, soft maples have a lower sugar content. Think Holstein milk, you have a less concentrate per gallon. And a soft maple buds out a little earlier, so when, that, when the buds start getting big, you have to pull your taps on the soft maples because the sap will start getting cloudy. And your hard maples might be good another four or five days. One boy can go if you want.
We tap between 70 and 110. This year it's 65. 65 or so because uh, we have some carryover from last year and uh, well, some of our trees are a little on the small side, and if we have carryover, why tap them? You know, why, why not? Why not just let them grow a year with, without any harassment? So I don't know if it slows them down or not. I've heard theories on that, but uh, I know that you need to be about 10, 12 inches at breast height, and some of our trees are barely on that. So if I don't need a lot of syrup this year, we just didn't tap some of the marginal trees. Okay, people. Michael, you go all the way to the top and work your way back down. Yeah, leave them for Aaron. Well, you, Aaron, you might have to use some heavy trees for Aaron and Josh. I think with this new horse, I'm just gonna stay on the lines today. A lot of the sugar shacks around here on different farms. People get done with chores at night and they know that they're cooking syrup till midnight. Well, so much of the farming anymore isn't a community thing. People all got big machinery and they do it on their own. Well, this is one of the last things where, even if you're not cooking syrup, you know, if you come over, you bring them a load of wood, maybe you'll go home with a gallon of syrup, you know. So it's good camaraderie. And then after a long winter, it's fun to do something nice outside. Yeah. Normally syrup's 40 to one, 40 gallons of sap for one gallon of syrup. We usually run 25 to 30 to one. What we're told is because we pasture our woods a couple times a year, our woods is getting some nutrients, some animal manure, and we always seem to run a higher sugar content. Okay, team. Easy does it, girls. Just mud. Just mud. It's okay, Pepper. We're gonna haul around. We're gonna haul around. Good girl. It's muddy. If you weren't gray before, you'll be gray when we're done, girl. Easy goes. You guys can walk a little slower. Michael, pay attention to the horses. Michael, pay attention to the horses. We can help it. Oh, we're gonna hit it. I'm thinking. Yep. Easy does it. Easy does it. Easy does it. Easy does it, girls. I know it sucks, but you're the only ones that can make it. 70 or 100 years ago, this might have been your only sugar for the year. So it's a, it's a good tradition to keep alive. And like we are talking about, it's a healthy, we feel it's a healthy sugar. And if you can do it yourself, why import it from somewhere? Ooh. You okay, Aaron? Aaron, you need to go get some weight off of Aaron? Or something, I don't know. You're okay, girl. We're just holding still. I think we have $1,100 in our stove and stainless steel pan. And uh, we probably have 
probably a thousand or eleven hundred dollars in our hundred and some taps and tins and bags and because them taps were like four dollars a piece, so that'd be four hundred. We probably don't even have that much. Seven or eight hundred dollars in hundred and ten taps. And you don't have to do that all at once. You can start out with ten or twenty caps. And we started out with twenty five and then next year we had thirty five and the next year we had fifty and pretty soon it turned into work. So this year we're tapping a few less trees and so and everything is reusable. Yeah. You can buy new bags. You could buy new bags. My wife washes them out, <laughs> turns them inside out, hangs them on the clothesline. She might be German and frugal, guys. <laughs> but we don't throw away a bag unless a squirrel chewed a hole in it or something. Everything gets washed and reused. And so that's like the end of the maple syrup season. Things are really starting to get nice. And all the picnic tables are covered with tins. And the clotheslines are covered with bags. And we're washing this up, put it away. And usually about that time, I'm drilling oats. And you just want maple syrup to end. Because you've been cooking syrup for three weeks. And you're out of firewood. and. Every, you know, a time for everything. A time for everything. Usually by the time syrup's done, um, like when we collect syrup tonight, it's a, we're going to use a, a Philly mare that we just started working a week ago. She's been drove about four times. So, you know, it's a, it's a, and I feel she's fine, so I'm already using her for collection. She stands pretty good and stuff, and I use her with an old, my old breaking mare, which is an old perchin mare. And uh, it's just another chore. You can incorporate that horse. So when you go to field work, she already knows she can stand. She already knows she can pull. You've already experienced, she's already experienced flapping plastic on the bags on the trees and time of year on the farm. We have all the mud and the snow melt, but yet it's cleanup time. You're breaking colts and you're cleaning up all the scrap and stuff. Well, any scrap wood gets burnt, you know, cooking syrup. Open some sides. You want ash slab wood? Or do you want that down? It don't matter. Build a little nest here. You can go to just about any of the sugar shacks around here, and it turns into a community thing like here. Don comes up and helps cook, and Judy sometimes comes up and visits with Katrina and stuff. But all the sugar shacks around here, um, a lot of beverages get consumed. Nobody can log the spring breakups on, and you can't do this and that, so everybody just kind of visits and takes a few weeks off and wants to serve. Good camaraderie. Yeah. Scientists said to God, they were going to have a discussion. The scientists said to God, we don't need you anymore. We can make man. And God said, really? He goes, yep. God goes, show me that. The scientist says, okay, get back. And he starts taking dirt and forming it up. God said, wait, wait, get your own dirt. God gave us all these things. All we have to do is finish the job. You know? The top track? It gets filtered uh, three times. Once off the tree, it gets filtered in here constantly skimming, and then when we pour it off the final cooking in the house, we skim it again. We, we filter it again. So, um, we've got a rolling boil, and it, it looks like foam, but and we're no expert on maple syrup. We're just trained by the neighbors, and they call it impurities. So we keep skimming this foam off. At first, it takes a while, and after a while, it's less and less every time you do it. Actually, the best skimmer is a pair of pantyhose over a coat hanger. We can't raise cane sugar up here in the north, and it's like God provided everything we need where you're at. You know, I mean, this is our sugar of the north, maple syrup. Um, we haven't mastered making maple sugar yet. We have burnt a few batches, 
but it didn't exactly turn out to be maple sugar. But I think when you get down that concentrated towards that maple sugar stage, you literally better be right there with little sticks of wood. And we have not mastered that yet, and a lot of times the farm, there's distractions. So when we get close in this big pan, we pour it off and take it in the house into a much smaller pan and finish it in the house on, a, on an electric stove. And they say maple trees do well because of altitude, soil, and temperatures. And our climates. Yep. Yeah. And this is another thing that I've learned since, since uh, getting more involved with the logging is this area grows some of the finest maple trees. This area in eastern Wisconsin grows some of the finest maple trees for like vernier maple, which can be wrecked in a hurry. If you start tapping your trees, you'll never have vernier maple then. But it's, you know, whatever the landowner wants from his maple forest, from his woods. But we get a lot of our sweetener for the year in the form of maple syrup. Obviously pancakes and buckwheat pancakes and waffles, but also an oatmeal, coffee, I don't know, you'd have to ask her. Ice cream. Ice cream. We maple make maple nut ice cream. Maple nut ice cream. Um, granola. The more you guys are around here, the, the skinnier you guys will actually realize I am because we do eat good on a farm. You use it for, as a sweetener in baking and that kind of thing? Yep. Yes. Sugar, and you can substitute it for sugar. You just have to be aware of the wet ingredients in your recipe and the dry ingredients and the proportions. Don't you have a error. cookbook? An old, an old cookbook to help you with that? Yeah, our first 11 years farming, I don't know if we talked about that, we were conventional farmers. Can, and you're taught, you know, we both went to ag school, you're taught specialized. So what we did is milk cows. We milked cows and raised crops for them cows and that's what you did. So since we moved here and went back to a 45 cow farm, we've been able to diversify a lot more. And she has a greenhouse now, you know, and other interests, other than just milk cows, breed cows and give cow shots. We never buy bought pancake syrup. Yeah, well that was just a plain old human error. I was tapping and tapping, we never got near as much as our neighbors. And finally I went back to the guy that started us out six years ago, I said, why do my trees run so much less, but we get a lot of syrup for how much sap we're cooking. So we're going through a few things we're doing, he goes, well how deep are you tapping them? I go, I don't know, just enough to get the tap in. He was, you're supposed to drill about an inch and a half. So then we put electrical tape on our drill bed at an inch and a half, and I started drilling them an inch and a half and tapping them. And the very next year was last year, we had more sap than we ever had to deal with. I mean, oodles of sap. And we made 23 gallons of syrup last year. The weather is a huge burden. The weather is a huge thing. And there's every different theory. Yes, theory. Dry fall or a dry spring, or if the roots are showing and there's no snow, or if you have a lot of snow, or if you had a lot of snow the following, the previous spring. And, so that's all right up there with Bigfoot and uh, the Groundhog Day. I mean, there's theories galore on what makes a good sap here. So, okay. yep. And the trees like the sun. They like the sun. Okay. Makes not it. the wind. Not the wind. Yeah, cold wind. It could, be, it could be 40 that day, but a cold wind, they won't hardly run. And we've had other times where it was, you know, maybe not even supposed to freeze that night. You get down around that 32, and it's like they ran that day, and they just kept running all night. And I don't know how that works, but... So we're no experts on it, but yeah, you need freezing at night and thawing in the day. Good sun. And sometimes you have a gangbuster year and it just never stops and you're praying for a break. And some years, uh, one year we had three runs. Yes. 2012, the drought of 2012, we had two or three runs. It got to 75 degrees and it never got cold again. We were done. We were done. What a, it's good to have some carryover for a family. So last year we had carryover, that's a, that's a good feeling. 2012 was just a, it's a wonderful spring for the farm. It's a horrible spring for maple syrup. That's why it's good not to have all your eggs in one basket. Here at the end, as you get more concentrated, it seems like you get really dense foam. And I think you're really getting to the business. In the beginning, it just looks like white sudsy foam out there. Now it's, you know, pretty, pretty dense foam, but. And I don't know if it's high in mineral content or what, I don't know why people call it contaminant or whatever, you know. That, Impurities, impurities, you know, but we take it off and it makes a prettier, a prettier syrup in the jar. Here we go. I'm sure this is how they do it in the factory, Joe.
anymore. Or should I pour again or quit with this and start jarring up? should quit with, oh, yeah. Quit with this, start jarring up? Yeah. Want to set it on there sideways? Keep transferring the hot water to get the jars warm so you don't shock that cold glass or even room temperature glass with this boiling hot syrup. So we keep trying to keep the glass ahead of us to get warm. Remember that last little thing, friends. Can I leave this in here? You want Three and a quarter gallons of syrup on 66 gallons of sap. That's a really high yield. How many more times do you think you'll do this, this season? As much as the weather cooperates, as much as God gives us, because if it freezes at night and thaws during the day, we do it up until the trees start budding. When the trees start budding, the sap turns cloudy, you pull the taps, you're usually out of firewood and out of patience and out of, yeah, it's, an, it's a whole other job added to the farm because you're cooking sap all day, you're collecting sap at night when the boys get home from school, you're finishing sap late at night, a lot of times what you cooked all day, and you've got an alarm set, you just want to go to bed, but the sap ain't quite there yet, or the syrup ain't quite there yet, so it's a whole other job. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.